So in the previous lesson, we set things slug, okay? And we talked about what a slug is. In this lesson, we're going to use the slug because I'm going to introduce you to a new concept called page data. And similar to a current user, which is a nice short expression where we can grab a user's first name, last name, uh, email address. With page data, we also have a shortcut to our data. So I could say uh, current company's logo, current company's name. It makes it really useful. So it's a way to associate a page with a thing in the database, okay? So bring up your property editor on the company page and then change the type of content to company. And when that happens, we can see that we have five issues now. Let's bring up this issue inspector. And we can see all of them pertain to go to page. And that's because we've now set page data and we always need to tell Bubble what data from the database we should be bringing down to this page. Very simple. So if I click on the first one, we can see this is a group in nav link that needs updating. And if I click on step one, Bubble's now saying, okay, you, you've set page data. So what data do you want us to send down to the page? And it's basically going to be current page company. So we now have the current user and the current page company uh, to write our expressions, far, far simpler. So let's do it for all of these nav links, okay? So candidates, you can do it in any order, just go through each one and select current page company. Jobs, current page company. Overview, current page company. Settings, current page company. Perfect, it looks like we have one more. And this issue is actually on the signup page. Aha, because we are sending Hannah, after signing up, we sent it to the company page. The company is expecting page data and we can send page, page data because we created the company in step two of the signup flow. So I'm gonna click on this issue. Bubble then takes me straight to the problem. Fantastic. And it's on step five on the signup button is clicked on the signup page. Okay, where is the company data we need to send to the company page? Here it is here. The result of step two. Result of step two. And all of our issues have been fixed. Let's go ahead now and create our company form. So I'm going to open up my elements tree and reveal group settings. So I'm going to copy and paste this. For this time, I'm just going to use the option at the top, copy, paste. Here we are down here. I'm gonna double click and just remove the copy. But with this group form highlighted, I'm also going to highlight the group above it because I need them in a row distribution, a row layout. So I'm going to right click and group elements in a row container. Fantastic. Now we could rename this to group forms. And on the layout tab, I'm looking for 32 pixels of column gap. And you can see we have this extra space here now. So what we're gonna do is let Bubble's responsive engine decide how wide or how narrow these forms should be instead of having a max width. So I've highlighted both of the forms. I'm in the layout tab and I'm just going to actually remove the max width and watch Bubble then decide how the space needs to be evenly distributed. Boom, looking good. Okay, so let's just change some details here. So this needs to be company details. Subtitle, so complete these questions to start posting jobs to our pool of talent. Complete your company questions. Company information. Just keeping it nice and consistent. It would be strange if we had a title and subtitle here and then not on the right-hand side. Okay, so we don't need a last name. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, we need to change 
remove some groups here. So when you click on group inputs, when you right click, and when you say ungroup these elements, okay, so they're ungrouped, and then we can just delete the last name. I'm going to grab uh, the first name, so the group label, and put in like drag it outside of this group, so it's its own row. And once you've done that, you can delete the last name. Now the last name is nested currently. There's a group behind it, I've got left over. So I'm going to select first parent to get behind it first of all, and then I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of this group inputs and select delete. Nice and clean. So this needs to say. Instead of first name, just company name. Okay, and let's change the, the label here. So just remove name. Remember, we need to be able to identify this in the workflow area. Now the initial content, because we have page data set, we can change this expression to the current page company's name. Lovely stuff. That will resolve to blue. Okay, so in the about, let's just change about to description. No real reason, just making a distinguishing design choice here. And then input about, let's change to input description. And the initial content, we're gonna to update to current page description. And then on the location, in brackets, company. Okay, so upload image becomes upload logo. And this is going to be another state here, guys. So company's avatar exists. So let's click the drop down, bring up the page element, and let's go find the original state. Click on the eye icon now. And here we have a custom state. So we're going to create a new custom state. We're just doing this a slightly different way just so you can see all of the options available to us. We're going to say logo. The state type is image. And then create. And then click back onto this picture uploader avatar, change the name to logo. And now we can reference the dynamic image is going to be the state we've just created, and that is the logo, company's logo. So I hope that you're beginning to become familiar with states. If not, You've still got many, many hours to get through, and by the end of it, you'll probably be tired of states, okay? It'll be second nature. And when we click on the delete button, we're going to be, go to element actions, set state, and we're gonna reset the state called logo at the, at the page level. Leave that empty. Okay, so let's sort out the workflows, then we'll update the data, and then we're good to go. So on the Save button, which I'm now going to update to Save Company, just because we have another Save button, both called Button Save, I'm going to add a workflow, and let's update the data. So make changes to a thing, remember, the company already exists, and it's, that company's called Orbit. So we're not creating something, we're making changes to a thing that exists. Current page company is where we can find it. And let's add all fields. We'll first of all remove employees because we did that at step one. But they might have made a spelling error with the name. So we're going to uh, add the name. But let's go top to bottom. So input descriptions value. For the location is the drop down. Company's value. Logo is the state, remember the state that's set at the company. So the company element, which is the page, there is the logo. Then the name. Here it is here, but it actually needs to be named a bit more clearly. Anyway. Okay, so that takes care of that. And let's show the uh, message that has been successfully saved. Same message is absolutely fine. 
And now for this picture uploader, guys. So let's run this from the workflow area. So click here to add an event. That event is an input value is changed. Okay, now we have to select the correct picture uploader. This time it's the logo. Just jumping around here a little bit, so I apologize. We're going to go element actions, set state. We've created the state, so let's just hook it up. State is at the company level. It's the logo state we created earlier. And it's this picture uploader's value. Double knows because we're listening out for an event based on the picture uploader's logo. But we are going to reset inputs as well, just of that um, picture uploader itself. Now there is another thing we need to do. Remember on this settings um, workflow, remember we set a state of an avatar. So we have to do the same basically for the logo. And we actually can set multiple states on single steps. So set another state. This one is called logo. And once it's saved to the database, it will become the current page company's logo. Okay, almost good to go. Let's just have another quick look around. So company's logo, upload logo. We did the delete. Current page company's name, current page company's description. Ah, this is what we need to update as well. So the default value on the drop-down location needs to be current page company's logo. And as at this stage, we can also set dynamic values here. So I'm going to remove this, okay? I'm going to insert dynamic data and I'm going to say current page companies logo. And instead of rescale, because I don't know what shape they're uploading, I'm going to say zoom. Okay, and the other thing we can also do is this image here can also become dynamic. Okay, so this is the current user's avatar and we're also going to zoom to cut or to push the image into that shape that we would like to cut, which is a circle. But actually, is it a circle right now? I don't think it is. So it's currently 40 pixels. So we need at least 20 on the round this year for this to be a circle. Okay, so I'm just going to check out the database. Uh, so all companies, you don't need to do this. Yeah, so we have, so Orbit is a slug. So let's go ahead, head over to the front end. Refresh the page. Okay, and I'm the current user. I'm Hannah, I'm logged in, and therefore the current user's avatar is showing. This image isn't showing, which makes me believe that if I... Uh, reveal the URL bar, I can see that we have forward slash company, question mark V equals settings. Check this out. After the company, and I'd like you to do the same, go forward slash and then orbit and leave the question mark V equals settings. Ah, sorry, we haven't actually uploaded the image. Okay, we haven't uploaded. I'm just going to remove, but make sure that Orbit is up there because we need page data. And naturally, when Bubble asks or asked us on the sign up page to basically send data to this page, we went back, remember, and we did we did that. The result is step two. So that has to uh, that has to exist in order to reference the current page company. So under description, I'm going to say we're a productivity company helping users solve problems faster. Okay, and location could be anywhere. Why don't we say this location is in New York? And Hannah is based, she works remote, remotely and she's based in San Francisco. And because we've reset the page as well, guys, we've obviously, we've lost this image here. Okay, naturally users w won't just be refreshing pages. Uh, so that's not a huge problem. But for now, I'm just going to upload the Orbit logo in the resources folder. There it is there, and if I hit save, 
you can see that now orbit exists up here. And if I actually click on the settings again, that will bring the state will be reset. Okay. So that's fine. We could also set the state on naturally on a page load. That's up to you. I decided to set it on the click of that settings group nav link. Okay, guys, this is looking really, really good. I'm pretty happy with this. Well done for coming this far. I think you've learned a lot in this section, a lot of new concepts. I think you're doing really well. Keep going, and I'll see you in the next lesson.